It's Women's History Month 2022, and I don't see much in the media about women in mathematics. So let's take a look at four women prominent in the history of mathematics. Each of them had obstacles to overcome to achieve what they achieved, and they all worked to make education more accessible for the next generation of students. Hypatia of Alexandria is the first woman mentioned in the history of mathematics. Let's use Google Earth to fly to Alexandria, Egypt, where Hypatia lived. The new library in Alexandria holds artifacts from the ancient library and from the time when Hypatia lived in Alexandria. Hypatia was, among other things, a teacher, an exceptional teacher. She had access to many of the ancient Greek manuscripts, and she made changes in many of them so they'd be easier for her students to understand. She also had the respect of the people from the different religious sects and the different political parties. Hypatia was not the only woman doing mathematics at that time. There were other women doing mathematics as well, we just don't know their names. Sofia Kovalevskaya is the first woman to receive a doctorate in mathematics. She was born in Russia. Here's a depiction of her on a Russian postage stamp. After concluding her secondary schooling, Sofia was determined to continue her education at the university level. However, she would need to leave Russia to do that. And young women were not permitted to travel without their father's or husband's permission, and they were not permitted to travel alone. To resolve the problem, Sofia entered into a marriage of convenience with Vladimir Kovaleski in September 1868. They moved to Berlin so she could study mathematics. She was not allowed to attend the university, so she took private lessons from Karl Weierstrass, a significant figure in the history of mathematics himself, who taught at the university. After four years of studying under him, she submitted a dissertation and was awarded a PhD in mathematics in 1874. In 1889, she became a full professor at Stockholm University, the first woman to hold a full professorship ever. Here's what one historian had to say about her. The more I reflect on her life and consider the magnitude of her achievements, set against the weight of the obstacles she had to overcome, the more I admire her. For me, she has taken on a heroic stature achieved by very few other people in history. Sophia was not a one-dimensional person interested only in mathematics. She wrote poetry and fiction. This is a novel she wrote. I bought it on Amazon.com. I enjoyed reading it. It's about a young woman who falls in love with a revolutionary and the difficulties they have in trying to change the inequalities in their world. Winifred Merrill was the first woman to receive a PhD in mathematics in the United States. She was admitted to Columbia University, but could not attend classes because they thought she would disturb the male students. She had to study from the textbook on her own outside of class. In 1886, she was awarded a PhD in mathematics. The granting of her degree was the outstanding event of the 1886 Columbia commencement. When she was given her diploma, according to newspaper reports, there was a round of applause which the gallant students in the body of the house kept up for fully two minutes. Here are two pages from her dissertation. Notice they are handwritten. Throughout her life, she worked to advance women in society. She helped found Barnard College, the women's college affiliated with Columbia University. Euphemia Lofton Haynes is the first African-American woman to earn a PhD in mathematics in the United States. She received her PhD in mathematics from the Catholic University of America in 1943. She taught in the public schools of Washington, D.C. for over 47 years. Haynes was an active and outspoken critic of the District of Columbia school system's track system, which she felt discriminated against black and poor students. In 1966, she became the first woman to chair the District of Columbia Board of Education. Among the schools she taught at was Dunbar High School, where she also served as chair of the math department. Now, Dunbar High School is a story all on its own. It was the first public high school for black students when it opened in 1870. By the time Haynes was teaching there, it had an incredible reputation. Students from all over the country came to study at Dunbar. Many of the faculty had advanced degrees, including PhDs. The list of prominent people graduating from Dunbar High School is a long one. 
In fact, the second African-American woman to get a PhD in mathematics, Evelyn Granville, graduated from Dunbar in 1941 as valedictorian. So these are just a few of the first women to make their marks in mathematics. There's much more to each of their stories and lots of places to go online to learn more about them. If you are interested in mathematics, I hope you will do yourself a favor and look for more information on the people we have highlighted. I know their stories will be inspiring to you as they have been to many other students as well.